Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of November 3rd. I'm joined with me with someone I'm always happy to talk with. Mr. Milwaukee's Union from Players Utopia. Yes, indeed. I love how you always say the whole name. <laughs> I do, I do. I like it. It's a good name. I, I, I don't... I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, wow, no one took that? Shit, that is such a good name. And I'm easy I'm achievers. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> That's a yeah. fucking terrible name. A nice kick laid back. It, 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 it gives uh, acknowledgement of the vibe of the show. So mm. it's still, still good. But hey, what's up, everybody? Glad to be back. Uh, RPG4, wearing the... Wait, wrong side. Wearing the hoodie. <laughs> yeah, he he went I to the headquarters right and night. stole their flag and made it a, a hoodie. Yes, me and Kevin Pereira had a sumo wrestling match for this hoodie, and um, hope that leg heals up, buddy. Yeah, I got. <laughs> he tore him up. He tore him up, and then yeah. and then he tore other things up later. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Like like we said right before we started recording, it's it's video game release season. There's yep. a lot to play. There's a lot of old stuff I got to get to as well, uh, and I'm having a good time running through all of it. Also, I, God of War's next week. Holy shit! I think we need to kind of cherish the quiet time. Because it's about to end. Like, we've kind of had it really... I mean, I'll be honest. I think we've kind of had it since Elden Ring, really. Like, we've, we've gotten games. But it hasn't been 2020. It hasn't play. been 2016. It hasn't been... Not 2016. It hasn't been, like, 2009. 17, 17 yeah. 2017 is another one. Like, it, it, it's been quiet. And I think it, I think it really will end. As soon as we hit November, uh, God of War date, and then we're we're off to the races with yeah. Callisto Mar- soon after. Yeah, Marvel Midnight Need Suns, Speed. Need for Speed. Oh yeah, fuck! Every early December is low key the new February. <laughs> yeah, December second has both Callisto and Midnight Suns. So, oh boy, that's annoying for me be- because I wanted to try both of them. So I'm and now I'm gonna have to either pick one or buy them both and just pray I can play them before January. I like to think Callisto is going to be short enough, but Midnight Suns, Lord have mercy. I think the devs came out and said it was 10 hours or something like that. For for Midnight or for Callisto? Callisto. Okay, Callisto's 10 hours. That's reasonable. That sounds all right. But yeah. whew, you, you're, telling me, you're telling me the hard <laughs> RPG is 10 hours? Get the fuck out of here. 12 to 14 hours with a little dev math. You're probably going around 10 hours, I think. That's acceptable. That's actually what I want for a game like I, that. So. I do too. I do too. I don't. I survival horrors. I really think need to be very careful with how much time you spend in them. Because after a while, in my instance, Resident Evil Village, I think it went too long. Because after a while, you just get too much things, and you're not scared anymore. I, I have a flamethrower. I'm not really worried about fighting anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? so that's an example. But and I'm glad you're joining us today. I hope the uh, end of the year festivities and busy work is keeping you both busy and happy yeah as always it is i'm 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 staying busy i will say thank god work has been very slow so i'm getting home slightly earlier which means i can play games for slightly longer and not immediately fall asleep <laughs> that's that's so, good yeah. that's always good to hear when you try to eke out what little playtime you can find and let's start not so rapid fire mm, excellent. but before we do that I have a bit that I need to do with Emmett. Emmett, I don't know if you remember, but last year you asked a favor to your Twitter following. Now, you may not return for the uh, rest of the year, so I do have to do this early, so I hope you forgive me. Fair enough. But I believe it was around November of last year that you asked your following. And maybe some other people are doing this. And it was, and I quote, bully me if I have not played stranger of paradise for 17 minutes straight and uh as of right now we are about a few weeks from that ending you had your your deadline was the end of year 2022 and i right here have my date bully emmett for not playing stranger of paradise for 17 minutes straight and the location of course is behind a wendy's now do i need to bully you or have you fulfilled your promise so the promise was to play it for 17 minutes no 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 no. so it was to fully play i believe it was to fully play the game Ah, okay. Have not done that. Three hours in. <laughs> okay, well, you have till the end of the year, technically. But oh. remember, if you don't beat it, I get to bully you for 17 minutes straight. These are your words. These aren't mine. Fair. Fair. I, you know what? I, I have it. I have been playing it. I will get back to it. 
I totally forgot I made that promise. So now I have more motivation. <laughs> it was, um, I believe it was uh, November of last year. Um, okay. I, I accept that. I accept that. I, I will be playing that game. I wish I had the tweet. I don't. God damn. But I did, oh, I did immediately go, okay, I'm, I'm writing this down. And I did. And it's in my calendar. So December 31st, you have until then. Well, in that case, I will make sure I am not going to get bullied in the back of a Wendy's for 17. <laughs> that I can promise. All right, I can't find it, but let's start with not so rapid fire. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has had an insane three day sale period as they reported sales of over $800 million, which breaks the previous record set by Modern Warfare 3 of about $725 million in a five day period in 2011. In other news, Modern Warfare 2 will be adding a ranked play mode in 2023, which also brings the news that this will end both Black Ops Cold War League play and Vanguard ranked play this month. Uh, the continued dominance of Call of Duty um, is being shown here. I mean, I don't know if you reacted to this news on any of your programming, but I did want to bring the question of, first off, did this surprise you or is this just more examples of just this single IP just dominating this this space? Um, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, I know that in the games press, not a lot of people have been aggressively excited about Call of Duty. Some of them are excited for Warzone 2, but Modern Warfare 2 hasn't been too much buzz for. But the rest of the world has been super hype about this game. Modern Warfare 2019 was kind of a reset for the whole franchise for a lot of people. Yeah. And Modern Warfare 2 was looking to go back to that era and also capitalize off of the nostalgia for the original Modern Warfare 2. So, you know, I knew this was going to be big. I knew it was going to be probably the biggest Call of Duty yet. Um and yeah, I'm just not surprised by the by the stats here. Uh, I am surprised by how polarizing the single player seems from reviews and thoughts I've heard. I've heard a lot of people say this is the best Call of Duty campaign yet. I've also heard a lot of people say this Call of Duty game is fucked up, but in ways that aren't necessarily exclusive to just this Call of Duty game. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely want to try it out for myself because I think even 2019, we all loved 2019 at the time, but in the last few years, it has aged poorly. Mm. Uh, so I feel like this game, having to jump off of those points, are having similar issues with the way that that aged. So we'll see. I definitely want to try it. Speaking as a weathered Call of Duty fan, I've played a lot of them. I have not liked a lot of them. I have loved a lot of them. I played the original three. I'm playing i played and finished the campaign for this one i had nothing but good things to say i actually found it interesting that uh, a lot of people actually disagree with me that this is actually a, 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 a like a actually really bad campaign I, I was surprised to read that uh because um it, i think it nails the spy thriller-esque narrative it tries to move in through the storyline i think it did it did good well in uh i remember an ign review i blanking on the gentleman's name but he had Brian these. McCaffrey. No, it was not. <laughs> it was. Wasn't uh, him? No, no, no. So, so people thought he did. He did because he shared the review. That uh, um, that's, Matt's that's Matt something. I'm blanking on his name. But Matt um, Murdock, yes. They, <laughs> Matt Murdock, yes. They're Daredevil. Um, but he had the idea of if it, if him not enjoying it very much, and actually compared it a lot to Modern Warfare Two. And although there were some instances I did agree with him in his overall view, I I vastly disagree that this is a bad experience, both narratively and uh, to play. Although he did say the gameplay was very good, he just said some of the things that they do is not good, especially if you compare them to Two. And, and I just think they did what the what Modern Warfare Two did in a slightly different way. And there were a couple missions that I did love. They kind of do a spin on All Gillied Up from um, Modern Warfare 1 that I very much enjoyed. I liked their take on um, uh, the AC-130 mission that they did from Modern Warfare 2 into this one, although I don't think it's better. I just like the way they did it in this one. But I think, I think narratively, I cared about the story more, and I understood every character, whereas in Modern Warfare 2, things happen in that story, and it's just like, okay, you know, they don't, they aren't great at uh, weaving the narrative straight to the character. They kind of let things happen in the background and you're supposed to kind of like know and pick it up. Whereas in this one, I think they just, they weave it very well. Things make sense. Like when something happens, you're like, oh, that makes sense. I like the like kind of 
it's not a mm, they they mess with a little bit with the Mexican cartel in this one, which is really cool, which yeah makes it very different too. There's a specific mission that I really liked, right. although it was a little um annoying a little because wild. because the oh, yeah. I, because the AI isn't great with their little stealth mm-hmm. thing they try to do. But I recommend everyone at least try it. Um, it's yeah. Call of Duty, so it will go on sale Black Friday probably for like fifty forty bucks. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually looking at it right now, and I remember seeing because the review that I thought of because Matt Perslow is the one who did it for IGN. Matt Perslow. Um, yeah, I heard. Uh, God, what's his name? Uh, J- I keep wanting to say Jeremy Renner. It's not Jeremy. Jacob Geller. Jacob oh. Geller was talking about it on Min Max, and he yeah. was like super negative on it. Mm-hmm. And from what I'm gathering from what he said, it seems like because I played Modern Warfare Two back in the day. It seems like that game has like a very like over the top action movie tone it does back in the day this one has a similar tone but everything's so much more grounded and serious now in a lot of media not just call of duty and call of duty's going with that trend as well to where them reaching for the pull from the headlines like types of conflicts that still go on today and mm. so trying to have that action movie grounded tone just doesn't hit as well when you can't suspend your disbelief as easily because yeah. you have access to the shit day to day <laughs> everywhere yeah. so like being a gameplay with it may not hit the same depending on who you are so um yeah i'm still gonna play it i, I i'm actually playing through vanguard because i just want to play all of them in order but um after vanguard yeah i'm gonna get to this one i've been playing multiplayer in this one already so i'm already enjoying that so should be good Square Enix has announced a playable NFT collectible art experience. This is over at Video Games Chronicle. I just found this as of going live, so there, there's no write-up. I'm going to be reading from the actual article posted by Chris Scullion. Sim- Symbiogenesis is described by the company as his, quote, first digital collectible art project designed from the ground up for Web3 fans, end quote. According to Square Enix, Symbiogenesis is set to be in set in a self-contained world where, quote, a wide cast of characters, symbiosis, all of which can be collected as digital art, end quote. It promises to offer, quote, an in- interactive story and a dedicated community, end quote. I don't think I need to read any more of this hilarious, whatever this is. Very curious it, if anyone will care about this. I mean, no one's going to care. It's funny because this thing got not leaked, but the name came out as mm-hmm. being uh, trademarked a couple days ago. And symbiosis is like some word that's very tied into uh, Project Eve, I believe is the name. Of that yes. Game. Or, no, yeah. uh, Parasite Eve. Parasite Eve, thank you. Yeah, Parasite Eve. So when this name popped up as a trademark, people were like, "Oh fuck, we're oh we're gonna get Parasite Eve." And Square Enix was like, "No, it's an NFT project. It's a parasite. parasite. Yeah, no, we have made a literal parasite." (laughs) Yeah. And what's very funny is, um, in Gadget, as uh, I just saw this headline in research. Symbiosis is some NFT garbage from Square Enix and not Parasite Eve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw a lot of comments um, that were like, uh, yeah. So a lot of people thing. are going to be very bummed. So I, I, I actually do feel bad for like people um, for that because although I have no idea what Parasite Eve even is, um, I knew it was like a PS2 era game, I believe, but I, I, I never had any inkling towards it. The only thing it. I know Parasite Eve is is a franchise that I hate entirely because of Greg Miller and Bless and Jamie. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You can go infer what that means. But I have spite on that franchise. I will say, though, it's good that they're making an entirely new franchise and building that around all their NFT stuff because if it got infected in the Final Fantasy, it got infected in the, yeah. you know, all the stuff we love near, God forbid, my oh. precious near, then I'd be crying. But yeah, just keep it over here so we know not to look at that franchise ever. After HBO Max inadvertently debuted the date of the Last of Us TV show premiere, HBO just came out and confirmed it, and it's indeed January 5th, 2023. Get excited. I am very excited for the show. Much earlier than I thought, too. I thought it would be March or something of that nature, but January 15th, so pretty much as soon as we start the year, we have HBO Max to look forward to. Yeah, I'm very excited for this. I am already... I'm. Thank you for announcing the date now, because now I have Thanksgiving and Christmas to talk to all my family members and be like, hey, y'all, let's make this the new show let's make this the walking dead again we'll this needs to be dead. our walking dead now you got to watch this show yeah. and then we 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 talk about it exactly so yeah thanks for announcing it i'm excited to hype everyone else up about it plague state Room has reached over a million copies sold announced from focus entertainment congrats to them it's a well-deserved game uh well-deserved for them 
Very good game. Yeah. Everyone should try it out. Uh, Black Friday is very soon, so you'd be able to get it half off, probably. On Game Pass, too. <laughs> and it's on Game Pass. Complex Games, the studio behind Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate, has been acquired by publisher Frontier for an undisclosed amount. Didn't have too much to add to the story, so I just threw it in rapid fire. Hmm. God of War reviews are out. They're glowing. Go read them if you want to read more reviews on the game. I don't need anything. I'm going to be buying this game. Day one. I will say, I believe this is uh, the first PS5 game that has scored this highly. Everything else, I think, has been 90 and under Metacritic. And this is, I think, at a 94, something like that. Mm -hmm. Which I believe is also higher than the original God of War. Which I think, I think is that. I heard it's the same. I heard is it's it the same? same? Okay, okay. So, yeah. so, it's, so it scored as high as the predecessor. Very excited. I can't wait to play it. I have nothing really to add because it's got a war. We don't really know much about it, which I love. I'm so glad that they're not doing anything. So the I have Last of Us 2 and us, I love it. Yes, yes. The Last of Us 2 and us. Kratos will die and we will be playing as Atreus. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of the 30 hours. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, that is, of course, all that we have for Rapid Fire. So I ask my co-host a question every single week. That is, of course, Emmett Watkins Jr. What? Have you been playing? I'm playing a lot. Um, I was discussing this once again right before we started recording. Uh, I've just been buying a lot of Steam Deck games, playing them for a couple minutes, and then putting them down. But I have gotten a long lot of play time in certain games. Uh, Elden Ring is, by surprise, one that I've been playing way too much of. I'm 20 hours into that game at this point. And... I didn't think I would get, because I know what everyone said in the reviews and in the conversations about it around launch, it was you, you play until you get stuck, then once you get stuck, you go explore the world, go find some more resources, go get some more XP, then come back to that stuck portion and just de decimate it. And I was like, all right, but I, I just don't want to be stuck and I don't want to feel like I'm you know, exploring the, war, the world just to come back to one specific point and do it again. Um, but no, it works. It's fun. And I like it a lot. Uh, to the point where I stayed up all night, a couple nights at, the, at this point, playing it on Steam Deck. And I had a weird bug on PC that controller support wasn't working for it. So I was like, ah, I got to figure this out. Sat there all of one night as well and figured out the bug. And now I can play it on PC at nice high frame rates and resolutions. And the game's great. So Elden Ring is the one I've been playing the most. Um, as I alluded to on the Players Club episode this week that just released, uh, I have not played as much Bayonetta 3 as I was hoping for. And it's not because Bayonetta is bad or anything. It's just... You stand with Hel Helena Taylor, is what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to say that. Good God. Um, it, that, that whole thing's such a shame, but we've talked about it on the show. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I it's just hard to motivate me to get a Switch in my hands nowadays because I just pick up a Switch and I'm like... Oh, yeah, these graphics are worse. Oh, yeah, there's no gameplay tracking. Oh, yeah, there's no achievements on this thing. It's just like I could have I could have the same form factor, same experience, but with all the features I expect from modern gaming in 2022. Uh, and when I get a Switch, it's not that. So uh, I'm going to play more Bayonetta 3. I already signed myself up to review it. I have to review it. I will be doing so soon. Um, but I got to get my way through the rest of the game first. I haven't played too much further than what I streamed the night it released. So um, that's it. And then the last thing I'll say, other than that, just looking at like all the games I've touched within the last couple of days, I will say one game that just came out, I'm very excited to play more of, uh, Ghost Song. I don't know if you heard of Ghost Song. Ghost Song, I think so. I saw a uh, couple screenshots of this game. Ghost yes, Song. It's uh, just released on Game Pass, and yeah. it's, a, it's another Metroidvania independent. It's actually from an ex-comic book artist who left comic book artistry to go make this game uh and it was on kickstarter like almost a decade ago and now it's finally coming out and it really looks good it really looks cool how i've been i haven't described this to anyone because no one's asked about this game yet but how i would describe it is if if hollow knight is more vania than metroid this huh. is more metroid than vania okay. but it's the same type of vibe where it's like kind of melancholic otherworldly this one's more alien where hollow knight is more like just creatures of old. Um, but yeah, I'm really digging the vibe of Ghost Song. I played it just for like half an hour right before we started recording, but uh, I want to play a lot more. It's on Game Pass, so that's how I'm experiencing it. I'm just streaming it on the deck. 
And yeah, it's really fun. It's really solid. Can't wait to play more of it. I think it's going to be good. I'm going to read this from the website because it interests me. Ghost Song is an upcoming Metroidvania style game with a particular emphasis on atmosphere, isolation, and mystery. Take control of a lost, nameless soul in search for answers and purpose. Delve the depths of treacherous world Lorien V to uncover its secrets. It's probably Lorien 5. To uncover its secrets, meet inhabitants and face your greatest fears. Very spooky uh, looking yeah. as well, uh, their website. <laughs> It's spooky in like the Studio Ghibli way, not like the yeah. horror movie. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really horrific. It's more just, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah, that's, I mean, Jesus, yeah. this thing wears Metroid on the sleeve. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is very yeah, Metroid. It's like, like as you're walking through, there's like ghosts just coming through the path, and you'll think they're an enemy or something, but it's just a spirit that just runs through you and just keeps going. Yep. And it looks like they have a level up, but it looks more like a shrine from like Elden Ring kind of thing. Yes, yeah, big statues you go to level up. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's good. It's good. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, can't wait to play more of it. I need to play this. I was, it was already on the tip of mine, and now it is guaranteed play, similar to what happened with Signalis, where I had no idea what it was that game was, and then I saw it like a week before it launched in like a little trailer, and I was like, all right, I'm buying, I'm like buying and playing this immediately. Yep, heard a lot of good things about that one too. I don't know if I'll get to it because I'm still a coward, but. <laughs> I, I, I want to play Scorn, so maybe I just like horror now. We'll see. Now, I have been pretty busy playing quite a bit of things. I played a little more Overwatch. I don't need to get into that because it's Overwatch. Played um, a good bit of Call of Duty uh, and tried out the multiplayer. It's Call of Duty, but they have a different spin on how you're leveling up. You unlock like parts and pieces of guns. As you're leveling up different guns, so for instance, if you want like an attachment on your M16, it will only be unlocked if you use like the AK-47 until it's like level 10, and then you have that attachment for every gun it's like usable on. So I've actually enjoyed that because it's actually a kind of compelling grind. As you might find a really good attachment on, let's say, a pistol, but like you you know you have to use the pistol to be able to like upgrade it to be able to get us uh, put on like your other guns so i'm actually oh, right. enjoying that oh. grind good bit uh it's very fun it's skull of duty i i don't really think i have really anything to add to the conversation other than it's multiplayer call of duty it's modern warfare it feels great um they did um nerf a lot of the movements so it's really just kind of sprints jumping you know you can uh jump they have dolphin diving and slides back yeah right? yeah they have sliding and you can dive now so like you can run and your character will jump and dive to the ground so they've but they've nerfed like slide cancels you have to do a bunch of stuff to be able to do that now so it is a little more casual friendly in like the multiplayer system i think and um i think it's my overall experience has been pretty balanced when i'm playing online at least aside from a few one off i will ask real quick have you played a third person mode yet i haven't because i don't I looks not fun. <laughs> like like I, I Call of Duty third person. I, I like I saw the clips. Uh, they tried to do it, I believe, in Modern Warfare two, the original release, and it just wasn't. Mm-hmm. I remember playing and being like, yeah, this you know they made it third person. It's not really Call of Duty to me. So I will say I did try a couple matches in third person. The feel because gunplay in Call of Duty is always just paramount. They do that incredibly compared to other studios, but it feels the same in third person somehow. I don't know how they mm. did it. Even though in the beta, whenever you would like aim, like hit the right trigger, the aim, you aim to your trigger, weapon. Yeah. Yeah. It would be your sights, but now they've changed it to where it's just behind the shoulder, unless you have a sniper scope or something. And even when it's behind the shoulder, each gun feel still carries through. And it's very, I don't know how they did it, but it feels like wizardry. And I've been having fun in third person mode. I'm not playing it all the time. I'm still mostly in first person, but it is definitely worth trying if you're even the slightest bit curious about it because it feels the, it feels just as good, which I could not believe. Okay, okay. I, that makes me open to trying it because originally I looked at it and went, ha, no. <laughs> like, this is a perfect FPS experience. I'm not going to try, but but if it's that compelling, I might have to just give it a shot and have some fun uh, for sure. And I've also been playing Marvel Snap. The it's This is like taking the industry by storm, I feel like. Uh, so I was playing that. I'm enjoying it. It's fun. It's a collectible card game on your phone. Uh, it's very quick. Only six turns. Your decks only have 12 cards. So like, if you lose a game, it's not that big a deal because it's 
five minutes and you go jump into another one and you repeat that and there's like different cards you get and if you're a marvel fan you're getting a lot of different marvel type uh uh cards and i love it because it's so broad so you're getting obscure cards i got leech i have um uh uh carnage i have like so many different uh types of characters i'm so glad they didn't just be like it's mcu like it's just it's marvel in general love that love that get your gambit on or whatever yeah yeah it, what's what's hilarious that you bring gambit up he's one of my favorite characters in um marvel and my puppy is so you're having fun today aren't you she's jumping around having fun um she's not those god of war reviews she's yeah, like oh. she's like where's god of war <laughs> but um <laughs> Uh, Gambit's like a actually a really strong uh, character. Just the downside is there's pools in the game, so you're not getting like all the cards at once. There's cards in pool one, pool two, and pool three, and they kind of get more complicated as you're going up. So I'm only in pool two, and I think Gambit's in like pool three or something. So I'm like, eh, I gotta wait for him for a while, but mm. it's fine. I have plenty, I have plenty, I have plenty of time because this thing, in my opinion, has nailed monetization. I if I want to spend money, you can make your cards look cool with like different art. You can spend it on credits to level up your card collection if you want to, but you can't do it too much because you have to level up your card, so you can't pay to win. Um, and yeah, that I think it's nailed it. I I gave it money just because I was like I pl I've played it now like for like two three weeks straight. I have to give them some money, so I bought their season pass and I bought like the starter bundle thing that gave me like Captain America. So like this thing's awesome. Oh, oh. all right. All I'll right. make sure that I, I would. You're muted. There you go. I just got in the mail as well. Nice eight mile. Yeah, oh, you yeah. usually the puppy is uh oh by the way, welcome back, achievers. Usually the puppy is <laughs> um pretty docile around this time. She's using naps or something. She's super energetic, so we just went outside, ran that off. She was able to use the restroom, so she'd be fine now. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, she demands attention. She's like, Look, if you're not gonna walk me. I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> this is the charge. Yeah, this is yeah. This is this is your penance. Um, and we were on what you have been playing. I don't. Yeah, I think that's it. Marvel Snap, Call of Duty, Overwatch. That's re that's really it. So, looking forward to God of War. Honestly. Yeah, gonna be a great time. Can't wait for it. Rumor roundup. Spotted and reported by VGC, Japanese trademark applications may be pointing to a long-announced game from 2019 coming from No More Heroes creator Suda51 and Deadly Premonition creator Hidetaki, Hidetaki, Hidetaka, Suhiro. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. A.K.A. <laughs> Swervy65, called Hotel Barcelona, Hid Hidetaka, Hidetaka, Suhari, Suhiro. Jesus, I'm butchering this today. Studio White Owls filed a trademark for both Hotel Barcelona and Death Game Hotel back in March 25th of this year. White Owl is a strange studio, said to say least, given the website page and bio, which I implore everyone to go read. But they're known for releasing 2021's The Good Life, 2022's The Deadly Premonition 2, and 2018's The Missing. I have no resonance with No More Heroes. I know it's a big game, or at least a very beloved game, so I just wanted to bring it up. But it looks like they're finally going to be jumping on this, as I, I want to say... When I was researching this story, there was an IGN stream in like 2019 in Japan that they were like brainstorming, like they wanted to work together to make a game and it was going to be called Hotel Barcelona and they like theorized a bunch of stuff. They like gave it like different ideas and things. So I just want to bring this up as I know people love those two separately, so they'll love them working together. Yeah, I'm a... I'm one. I'm a fan of their games from afar. Like just the fact that yeah. they're weird, the fact that they're strange, it's just... They have the vibes and aesthetics that I really like. Me too. Um, but I haven't played much of their games, actually. I don't think I've but played a single of their games. Yeah. I, I feel like I've played, like, I played a little bit of a, not Deadly Premonition. What's the other one? The one with the gun that's called Boner. Uh, <laughs> Shadows of the Damned. The oh, EA. wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually remember that. Exactly, yeah. So, like, here and there, I've touched their work, but not a lot. This does seem like a match made in heaven for the type of weirdos that like their games anyway. Um, so I can't, this feels like the bad meets evil of video game collaboration. Mm, mm, mm. I'm a big fan of, so I, I look forward to seeing what this is. Can't guarantee I'm gonna play it because historically I don't, but I'm glad they're still kicking. I'm glad they're still making cool, weird shit. Uh, yeah. And the guy I love, uh, 
Hidetaka because his the bio on White Owl is fucking hilarious. Please go read it, everybody. <laughs> it is strange and awesome. I'm like, I like that he's a, I like he's weird. I like it. Yes. Even he, they even they even say well they even say that in their like uh, kind of bio thing like, uh, w- like we're here to like be weird. Like, like that's the, like, that's the thing. And I'm like, fucking awesome. I love that they wear it on the sleeve like that. Hell of a mission statement. Last week, we covered a story about a new internal development team in po- partnership with visual arts who recently worked on The Last of Us Part 1. And we have some more news to cover as another job listing in the San Diego area may be pointing towards a game we know and love. The listing reads, quote, co-developing an exciting new project with Naughty Dog in a beloved franchise. End mm. quote. Now, we did get word earlier this year that they were trying to remake Uncharted 1, but all of that uh, work was focused back to Last of Us Part 1 to try and uh, help with that development. So, Emmett, Hmm. it kind of has to be Uncharted, right? I can't see it being anything else. I'm thinking it's Uncharted. I'm thinking, I don't think it's a remake of one because at this point they have Nixus there. I yeah. think they're just going to say, hey, Nixus, can you just port the Nathan Drake collection to PC for us and yep. then we'll call it a day? Yep. I that's agree. long overdue. Um, I, I feel like it is Uncharted. I think it's a new Uncharted. I hope it isn't. I don't want to see Nathan Drake again. L- leave him where we left him. I, I don't want to see agree. Elena. Yeah. I don't want to see any of the main cast, really. I could take like uh what's her name chloe chloe can come back uh what's her name from shoreline i forget her name uh oh my oh, god um the young lady i like her so much mm, yeah Laura bailey voiced her she has great hair Bailey's and that was weird yes yeah, yeah. little bailey yeah weird. <laughs> yeah nadine um, i forget her name nadine thank you yeah nadine i could take her back i could take some of the side characters and like a lot of lost legacy stuff back but leave the main cast out of this unless you want to bring cassie drake as like an adult or maybe even like a a late teen I could take. But yeah, I want this to be a completely new thing. If you're going to go back to that well, go back to the vibes, not the characters, because that's something I hate from, you know, franchises like Star Wars, where you made nine movies about the same like six people. <laughs> it's like there the, the it's a galaxy. There's more people in the world and this is a world. So there's more people that you can uncharted with. So yeah. Yeah. It's probably I, uncharted though. I wouldn't be yeah. I I I almost think it's has to be uncharted. But mm-hmm. I would I would argue that I I wouldn't mind too much if they brought back old characters, but I do not you bring up a very good example of Star Wars. I do not want them on adventures. I do, I want a cameo and, and and we're good. We don't need to like you don't need to wheel them out and be like, "You remember? <laughs> you remember this? You remember him?" We don't need all that. I'm fine seeing them. It's just I don't need like you're ready <laughs> slowly throwing a hook trying to walk up and you know it's the joke because he's old i'm like all right we don't really need that um i do hope that they pick up where the obvious starting point is for the series um and being even more tomb raider than it already was which is cool because it was always a semi homage to indiana jones and tomb raider so i do that raider <laughs> yeah do that raider yeah so i'm hoping we get something of that nature i I can't wait, and it seems to be almost ironclad that this is, because I it ain't no way it's the other things that they're going to be working on, so it's pretty much in charge. It ain't Jack. Yeah, it ain't Jack. I, if, I, if it's Jack and Daxer, I'm stabbing myself in the chest. I will say, if that happened, I would disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> I would disintegrate for the opposite reason, I think. <laughs> I, I'm out of disgust. <laughs> I would just be impressed that they did it at all, is all. You In guys hear out of war being different. They're yeah. gonna do that back now. Holy shit, that would be crazy. Wouldn't even be excited. I'd just be like fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to ask Neil Druckmann, like, why? <laughs> why is why this? <laughs> yeah. And I'd have to see Janet Garcia's reaction to it. That's all. <laughs> just see her melt. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Let's start the actual show for the week. It's a spicy one. PlayStation VR 2, we can finally talk about both the price and release date for Sony's upcoming virtual relay headset for the PlayStation 5. Announced Wednesday, the primary bundle for the headset will cost $549.99 USD and will launch February 22nd, 2023 with pre-orders going live November 15th, all of this being revealed by the PlayStation blog. 
The bundle features the PSVR 2 headset, the PSVR 2 Sense controllers, and the stereo headphones. There will also be a Horizon Call of the Mountain bundle that will be $599.99. That will feature everything in the standard edition and will include a download voucher for the game. Hmm. Now, Emmett, would you like me to go on or do you want to stop here? Um, let's go on until we start talking about specific games, because then we can get into all this. With this reveal came a wave of announced games coming to the platform. About 11 have been confirmed, with more than 20 titles confirmed for launch by Sony. Let's cover a few, and a handy list from VGC shows all the announced games, as well as adds what other platforms they're currently on, as it highlights an obvious problem. Crossfire Sierra Squad, a VR first-person shooter developed by Smilegate. The Light Brigade, a single-player roguelike developed by Funkatronic Labs, which will be crossed by PSVR and PSVR 2 title. Cities VR Enhanced Edition, a VR adaption of the city-building game City Skylines, currently available on MetaQuest. Cosmonious High, a school-based game developed by Alch... Chem Al Alchemy Labs. Al Al Alchemy. 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 Oh, okay. All right. I was trying to say it more <laughs> cuter. So it's just alchemy. Right, that's very. Yeah, just alchemy. That's very cute. The creator of Job Simulator, currently already available on Steam VR and Quest Two. Hello Neighbor Search and Rescue, a VR take on the popular neighbor series, coming to both PSVR and PSVR Two. Jurassic World Aftermath Collection, a compilation of both Aftermath games, which was previously released on MetaQuest. Pistol Whip VR, an enhanced version of 2019's Pistol Whip, which is already on Quest and PSVR. Zenith The Last City, an enhanced version of the Quest and PSVR MMORPG. Owners of the PSVR version will be available uh, for an upgrade for free. After the Fall, an enhanced version of a co-op VR shooter released in 2021 for Quest and PSVR. Owners of the PSVR version will be able to upgrade for free. Tentacooler, a port of a physics-based octopus game, currently available on Quest 2 and Steam VR. Cool boy. All right. Emmett Watkins Jr., we got news of this. I would like to start us off, as I usually punt the first story to the co-host, I would like to be a little selfish today and start us off. I apologize to everyone at home. I was right. This is pretty much as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it would be 500 bucks. I did think speculate that it might be more than a console here we are it is it's more than a ps5 in most regions not all of them technically but most um it is uh in frankly this is embarrassing to announce a 550 console also announce that it's not backwards compatible and also your 11 titles that you announced with your announcement of your premium product for an already premium product more than half of them are already available on either a competitive platform or your own platform. This is, I can't believe this is like the, this is what they wanted to come out with. No wonder they didn't make a state of play because this would be even worse. We could meme them throughout the ages with all of this. So they were probably wise to not make a state of play at some point. They probably were like, we just don't have it right now, so we're going to have to rip the Band-Aid off with backwards compatibility a couple weeks prior to the announcement of the date and the uh, price. And then we're going to rip off the other Band-Aid. By the way, it's 550 costs more than the system. You're going to have to spend over a grand to buy both of these things. And then you're going to have to buy games on top of that because it's not backwards compatible in any way. And we're not offering any free titles as of right now. Emmett Walkers Jr., please take it away with whatever you want to say. I'll say this. There... To counteract some of that, I'm hearing some good things. And those some good things are, I did not expect any developer to make free ver free upgrades to their PSVR 2 versions of these games. I think After the Fall is a great one because that was a flagship PSVR title last year. Uh, and it looks cool. So it's cool that that's getting an upgrade. Pistol Whip VR. I don't know if they're getting a free upgrade, but that seems like it one is. I remember. He okay, it is. So it is. It, it is. If you have Pistol Whip on psvr you will get a psvr 2 title okay so so yeah that's very good hopefully we see a lot more of those because i know i have not a lot but a handful of psvr games where i'm like oh man what am i gonna do when i can't play um arizona sunshine i i think that would be great on the better hardware um same thing for like i think red Sol solstice is one the american dreams another one like yep. those smaller shorter vr experiences are the ones that i 
want in VR. So give me those, give me a free upgrade, and yes, I'll play it in the next one. Um, that's really the only good thing, though. It's <laughs> it's rough because yes, it costs it costs way too much, and it just it kills me because if this thing was the same exact price, same exact lineup of games that they announced here, and it was backwards compatible, then yeah, that's easy. Like I'll sell the old one, get a hundred or two hundred bucks off of it, and then use that towards the next one. And then, you know, be able to play all my old stuff. And I don't have I don't feel pressured to immediately buy a bunch of games for it because I can play my backlog just like I did with the PS5. Like it's an easier purchase when you know you're not giving up that much. 100 percent agree with you. If it was backwards compatible, I wouldn't be complaining at all right now because I have a backlog of games to play Uh, Mm -hmm. via PlayStation Plus games that they've made free via sales, via other methods that I've garnered PSVR titles. I wouldn't care because I have plenty of games to play. I haven't had an inkling to plug up my PSVR currently. So I have been, uh, I have like a lot of games to go play. I have like the Star Wars, like episode games. I have like the Walking Dead, Satan Sinners. I I have a good bit. So there's plenty I would have would play. I actually was looking forward to buying this. Then they announced it wasn't backwards compatible. Then I was like, okay, well, if they have a PS plus collection type of service, maybe I'll still be able to buy Nope, that still hasn't been talked about, so I'm okay. So I'm still waiting on the potential announcement of that, if that's going to happen. Hopefully it will. Uh, the reason that PS5 was an easier pill to swallow, that they were going to be 500 bucks is because it was backwards compatible. I am flabbergasted that they are leaving the newcomers to, the se- to, to this tech behind. At least I wasn't one of the first people. I actually got my PSVR very cheap from someone who was just trying to like get rid of it. So I'm, I don't feel that burned via PSVR 2, uh, v, sorry, P, VR 1 to VR 2 not being backwards compatible, but I do feel bad for the early adopters. They're pretty much not getting anything out of this uh, for, for like having thing other than, of course, the games that they're playing. There should be some sort of, mm-hmm. like, you should respect the early adopters to your tech in some way, at least making it backwards compatible or something of that nature. I just can't imagine this thing being a hit now at launch now, and they're, miss, uh, they're also missing um, Holiday, which is where you want it to be so now that's a a major hit blow and now you've not only announced a a premium product in times where the dollar isn't going as far for a lot of people in their wallets with inflation and other things a lot of people losing jobs a bunch of stuff happening right now you're also (laughs) you're also saying spend a grand and you can play the vr games because you need a ps5 and now you need if you're a headset now, that is still technically cheaper than other entry points other than the Oculus. That doesn't make it any better, though. Yeah, this thing isn't... There's no way that this is going to have the same degree of fidelity that like Steam VR has. I know the index is about 1,000 yeah. with all the extra components and stuff purchased. Yep. Um, I can't imagine this is going to be on that level. Uh, and I know even now we're... You know, that's a thousand, not including the PC you would need for it. So even the price there is a little bit different, but it's it's hard it's hard for people to swallow. I will say with the PlayStation Plus thing, I do think that they're gonna have PlayStation Plus games included w- that are VR compatible, that are VR2 compatible. I just don't think it's gonna be like they did with the PlayStation Plus collection. If you bought a PS5, I don't think it's gonna be that. I think it's gonna be instead of it being three games a month, it's now four games a month. And one of them's a PSVR title. And that's going to be how they slowly Trojan horse, you know, a library that you now have a backlog of after two years and then you buy the headset. But like, like you said, this thing coming out in February, people aren't getting this for their friends or kids as a gift. They are getting it because they want it themselves if you're dropping it in February. And the impact isn't going to be as heavy as they might think it will be. I do think they're going to sell a lot of consoles this, this, uh, this fall season, this holiday season, because yes. they're making a lot more. The sales are going up. So yep. it will be a $500 purchase more than it'll be a thousand dollar purchase for a lot of people by the time February comes around. But still like, especially when we're in a, we where February is full of so many games that aren't VR that we care about. Like I'm not, I'm buying atomic heart. I'm buying, you know, whatever other games coming out in February before I get to anything on PSVR too. So it's just an easier thing to push down the road. And like you said, Quest 2 is out here for, I think, 400 400 still. for the, like... Uh, the standalone set. Like, yeah, like the six, uh, 128 gig, I think. And then yeah, 256 yeah, yeah. gig is 500. 
Yeah. So, yeah, that's still a better deal for a lot of people, especially considering most people play one or two VR games and never touch it again. Yep. So, yeah, it's just it's just a damn shame that, yes, I'm I'm sticking with PSVR one because that's where my backlog is. Yep. But I still I am going to be annoyed when I have to set up all the things, put the camera up, do all of this, get the PlayStation moves charged like it's still going to be annoying to do all that stuff. But if I want to play the games I've already purchased, that's what I have to do. Yep, so, and it, it's a it's it's a shame. I don't know why. I don't know who thinks this is, was a good idea. I, there should be some sort of back end and API that just makes backwards compatibility way easier or something. I, I, I don't yeah. I don't get it. This 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 would have made all of this a much easier pill to swallow. So without any of the extra features, this is sad. And also, Sony does not have the best track record with supporting things that don't have great launches. Vita. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like God. like we we don't we don't have a good track record for random one off things like PSI and just random things that they tried to do that didn't really pan out. I, I'm not yeah. I'm not I I'm a I'm a little worried that that this thing I, comes out and they just go oh it didn't sell well uh, we're gonna have to spend even more money to try and make it more sustainable. I will say Let's not worry about I'm it. a little I'm a little less nervous about VR because. VR, even if Sony releases PSVR 2 and it's and it bombs or whatever, there are success stories in other sections of the VR community that are popular. You got MetaQuest 2, they're still doing that. You got uh Valve with the index, that's still a popular thing. And every now and then you'll see another third party make some type of PC VR headset. They understand that like the market is going in this way. Whether or not the customers actually want that, it is going in that direction to a certain degree. So they understand they're trying to get ahead of a certain thing. Where the Vita definitely felt like, we've been doing handhelds for decades. Here's another one. Here's probably the best one to date. And it didn't launch so well. And they looked around after that bad launch and they were like, all right, this, there's no path forward. The path forward ended up being the Switch, which was a hybrid does, design, but... They didn't see a path forward at the time, so they just cut it until we get all the way here where the Switch has rejuvenated things. Steam Deck, as I've been talking about, goes crazy. So, you know, if they launched the Vita around this time, they could see a path forward because they're like, all right, we just need to do what the Switch does and make it a hybrid system. Um, but here we are with this. Uh, I think I, I just hope we get more of these devs because I'm glad that a lot of these devs are doing free upgrades. If more devs do free upgrades and I get like a solid five to ten titles that i can just play instantly when i pick up a psvr thanks to an upgrade that might be worth it but even then 550, 550 bucks so after tax we're looking at about 580 so pretty much 600 dollars yeah. ish like to, that's to not drop. that's not an impulsive amount of money steam oh. deck was close to impulsive if you bought the base model that's yeah. close to impulsive purchase yeah like even, anything over 100 is a lot but like as far as like a tech purchase that's close to like all right fuck it let's go 600 is like you're tipping towards a thousand and once you get into that realm at all it's like oh god no that's yeah. something i have to plan around yeah i had planned on buying this i think i'm just gonna buy a steam deck that seems like more worthy of my time than buying this oh thing like buy a fucking steam deck. <laughs> Don't even, it's not a question it's not a question, it's, I mean, it's not a question. take away it's, de it's definitely not a question now like i i was originally um going to get this thing and now that i don't have i'm like all right well i'll, I'll get something else before i get because again like i don't think i said this on the show yeah. but like I, I i heard an economist i forget who it is some someone was like if if you're gonna buy something just do it now because it, it everything's gonna suck soon so like if you have oh, yeah. like a impulse buy or there's something you wanted like a pool or a, or you wanted to build a deck or something buy it now because everything's about to get either more expensive or we're going to have less money one of those things are going to happen so mm -hmm. I, 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 I that this was going to be kind of my last big purchase and then everything was going to go in like the savings and i was going to try and brunt the upcoming storm of probably uh some sort of recession but i don't want this thing now it seems like even less compelling the the lineup is incredibly boring uh and aside from I won't uh, say the lineup is like bad. A lot of it is like niche titles, like City Skylines VR. I'm not playing that, but like I, after I the did, fall, it looks great. I should have said for me because a lot of this I don't care about. <laughs> Jurassic World I would like. Um, Light Brigade sounds interesting. Um, uh, uh, Zenith looks kind of cool, and um, Pistol with VR I heard is really good. 
So I'll say Cosmodius High looks really neat as well. I looked at that earlier. And then um uh Horizon, of course, called the Mountain. I really want to play that. Like I, I very much want to play that. Does that justify spending six thirty on both the game and the thing plus tax? Just to play one game? I don't think so. <laughs> I do not think so. So I do not think I'll be buying this thing at launch. I do hope that they try to turn this thing around maybe at some point later next year. I don't know. But the, I, I firmly believe like this is this is it. Like what what we see is what we're getting. I don't think anything crazy is going to be announced in the next few months. If they had something really compelling, they would have announced it here because they this is when they announced the price and when they announced the pre-orders. They want you to pre-order. The pre-order date is in 15 days, the 18th, right? uh no it's on the 15th 15th sorry so so in about 12 days so they want the, they wanted good news now to, to get you ready to pre-order now now their their cards are played i really don't think they have anything left this is what's this is what launch is going to look like so we're gonna have to see <laughs> like what what they're gonna pull out of the hat for the for next year if they are still with this thing i think they will be but you know? They'll stick with it for about two years like they did the vita and if we we're not at a million two million units sold by then start worrying yeah i will say for the price of a psvr you can get yourself the second tier of the steam deck the 256 gig model so just do that just do that. yeah i'm just gonna do that they uh, why like i was very much thinking about just buying a psvr but now i'm like i'll just get a steam deck and, and have emu deck on the fucking thing and have a thousand times more fun exact the mundo also steam sales are fucking crazy so. yes that too Reported by Jason Schreier at Bloomberg, Embracer Group, the mega conglomerate that recently purchased Square Enix's Western Studios, made a baffling decision this week. And finally gave us a look at their strategy in gaming. Onima, formerly named Square Enix Montreal, known for the Gull series of games on mobile devices, will be closed down. This is strange as they were purchased back in May with the other Square, uh, Square Studios, Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal, and of course the studio. And even more strange than that, they had their name and branding changed October 10th. Barely a month before they were announced their closure, as we have covered many times in the show. Embracer is a huge publisher owning many studios, so the fact that they closed one down is quite unusual given their laissez-faire mentality, but this may be a sign of more closures to come as they have bloated to such size that may be unstable in the coming uh, recession that we may be experiencing soon. Back to Jason's reporting, we claimed that the, uh, sorry, he claimed that there will be some movement from Onima to Eidos Montreal, but unclear how many staff still have uh, a job there. Somehow, we're, uh, sorry, someone working there used this chance to tell Jason Schwire what we can expect from Eidos as they're currently working on a Deus Ex game uh, that is probably in pre production, and they are a co development partnership with Xbox to make Fable with Playground games. Um, not yeah. unlike the uh, Crystal Dynamics co development with, um, perfect dark they're doing that as well so it looks like they're still kind of i guess pawning off for lack of a better word to xbox to assist in their development yes indeed um i want you to start off because i i started early and took up a lot of the the air i want you i want your take on all this uh you, you kind of are known for liking a lot of the embracer games and this is kind of the first time we actually saw Embracer close a studio, really. They they haven't really closed that many things. They just kind of buy things. So what did you make of this news? I think this one's a little bit surprising because it is a closure. Like you said, we don't hear them shut anything down. I am not surprised that this is the studio that got it. Not because they made bad games. Like I like I played a decent bit of Hitman Go and Laura Croft Go, so I enjoy those games. Actually, I think there was a Life think- is Strange Go as well was that there? i want yeah i remember being interested in it but i don't know i don't know if it got announced and didn't come out or if it's just um you know something else strange go let me see no i am not seeing anything i'm not seeing anything related to a life is strange go i just typed it in and i just see the actual life is strange <laughs> full the full scale games um but in any case, yeah, Life is Strange Go isn't a thing. Maybe that was like a April Fool's prank or something stupid I saw. Probably. Uh, but in any case, yeah, uh, they make great games. It's just the fact that their games, the reason I'm not surprised it's them, their games do kind of focus on the mobile side. They were really trying to transfer these Square Enix franchises into mobile titles. And one thing about Embracer Group, if there's one thing they don't embrace, it's the mobile platform. <laughs> they 
are strictly for they're making switch games they're making steam playstation xbox they do not care about a touch phone screen now a couple games of theirs do end up on phones like titan quest is a good one that you know is pretty popular on phones but that is just a port of an old game which just ties into their their business model already so it's not too surprising that this is the studio that got the axe but hopefully those folks that do uh Hopefully the folks affected will be able to chase for the Eidos Montreal without too much issue. And hopefully the ones that don't are able to land on their feet somewhere. Cause I know it's uh it's rough out here for not just the video game industry, but soon everything. So hopefully they're able to get something out of it. But uh yeah, they I, I don't want to say they deserved it, but it's just a damn shame because they made cool games and they seemed like they had a bright future ahead of them. They were planning on new IPs and a bunch of other stuff. So you know, it's just sad to see. Just as a reminder, um, 2014, they developed Hitman Go. 2015, Hitman Sniper and Lower Cough Go. 2016, Deus Ex Go. 2022, saw Hitman Sniper, The Shadows, and Tomb Raider are loaded. And they had two unannounced... Um, uh, sorry, they had two in-development games. One was a Space Invaders game and Avatar Generations. So they were in development with games. I assume those projects are just DOA now, uh, especially if Embracer doesn't care about mobile. Uh, it, it is a shame, as I did love the Ghost series, and I th- that was a pretty talented studio. Although, you know, they they weren't able to really stretch their legs insanely, but they were able to make a bunch of fun games. Uh, uh, they haven't done a lot recently because I assume they were using a lot of that time to make Hitman Sniper, which apparently makes us a ton of money. Oh and, yeah, it's probably their biggest game money wise. Yeah, and then they made Tomb Raider Reloaded, which I heard was not great, but sad to see. I hope the best for everyone involved. Um, I do think this is the sign of things to come for Embracer, as I think they were more interested in IP versus the actual studios themselves, but we'll see. I guarantee that. I, I'm sure they, they saw, oh, we can get DSX for how much, and then they're mouth watered rather than the actual talent. Yeah, yeah. Say. Yeah, very. Nibelian. Very well-known video games aggregator on Twitter has announced that he is quitting this past week, and he spoke very candidly on his Twitter that it just isn't paying off in any way, either through his Twitter or the recently released Patreon that he did. And I wanted to read his statement. After some uh, introspection, I made a decision to focus my time and energy elsewhere and move on from Twitter. This marks the end of my video games coverage and my active participation in this platform. Thanks to everyone for the fun times. Farewell, Nibel. P.S. I'll leave the account up so that no one can grab the handle from uh, malicious purposes. End quote. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, there's a bunch of ways I I'm, I want to take this. One, I want to I respect him for being very candid. I didn't read his full full statement. He actually made a very lengthy one, basically saying yeah. uh, he overvalued himself, which I was like, oof, that uh, that hit me in the feels <laughs> when he said that. I was like, I know that mm-hmm. feeling. Um, and second, he pretty much was like, uh, given my performance on Patreon and how I had to cut a bunch of like uh, tears and things of that nature because nothing was happening with them. He was like, I, n- I'm not valuable here, so I need to go somewhere else where I am. And I was like, yeah, I, I feel you. you. At the end of the day, man, you at the end of the day, you were a guy that showed us the news on Twitter and just, there's just too many people doing that thing. So I get it. Like he just wasn't able to make money off of it. And it's sad. And I wish we still had him, but I get it. I, I honestly wish he could go and do something. I just don't know what that would be. Maybe, uh, he, I don't think, he, I mean, he wasn't a journalist per se. He just kind of like gathered news. So hopefully as as he I goes and does something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, as far as I understood, he had a non-games media job, but mm. just had access to a computer the entire day. So it was very easy for him to like compile this stuff because he's just at the screen all the time. Um, but he was talking about how he's got promoted or just moved to a different position where he's traveling a lot more, which requires him. He can't just be at a screen all day, get getting this news as it happens. So I think he was just, I mean, people underestimate like, yes, it is quote unquote, just a tweet. It is just, okay. You compiled all the thoughts and the headlines and put them in a tweet. So we don't have to click through all the time, but that is a very viable or valuable resource. Like I remember on kind of funny games daily, they were talking about like, half the stories they would write or half the like little summaries they would write would be from the Bellion tweets. So he provided a very, or they provided, we never found out their identity, but they provided a very valuable resource that a lot of people specifically in the games media industry really relied on. And I do think that 
that is something that money could have been made from. Um, if not from a Patreon, because I do think that it's really hard to make a Patreon when like they had a personality. It didn't necessarily come through in the tweets itself. So Patreons are really good for if you have a strong personality or just a very strong like service that you can't live without. That is people are going to pay for that. But uh, for the type of thing that they did, it's like it's a very valuable thing. But it's easy to take for granted because you can just click through and find out, you know, what's actually part of the story. What are the review scores? But it's it's a nice convenience to have. And that is a convenience that is valuable. Like I could imagine if Twitter was under better management, you could easily see, you know, them writing for Twitter, like in the same way where they take the trending topics and break down what actually is trending. You could easily be like God of War reviews drop. Here's every review score. And then he, they could have written that and gotten money for that and, you know, work for Twitter in that type of capacity or just anything else. You know, Facebook does a similar thing. YouTube does a similar thing. Whenever there's big news, they have their own or actually Snapchat's an even better example where they have their own shows telling you about like the news and stuff going on. Uh, they totally could have worked for something like that. So it's a shame to see them leave. Their service was valuable. I understand their thought that, oh, I, I overvalued myself. It's not that they overvalue it's not that they overvalued themselves. It's more that it's you they could have been paid for that work in a different way than Patreon, because Patreon is not the place to go for this specific type of thing. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'm sure they're happy no matter what. They're still following games media and everything. It's just, you know, hopefully they're doing it in a way where they can actually live their life. Because I know it's very difficult to stay on top of all that shit all the time. I tried to do that back when I first got on Twitter. Um I, I wasn't I wasn't necessarily trying to do the rebellion thing, but I was doing the Wario 64 thing where every yeah. time there was a sale, I'd be like, here's everything on sale. Here's like some recommendations, blah, 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 blah. And I was known for that for a while, but it just required me to be in front of a screen all the time. So it's it's a lot of work. It's hard work and it's valuable work. So, you know, hopefully uh, they're able to find peace, I guess. There are what... there are two things that I would like to push back a bit. One, you brought up a good example, but I, I would actually want to say it's the opposite of what, of what you uh, told. And you brought up that, for, for instance, Kind of Funny Games Daily, um, which is daily news show run by the Kind of Funny Network, uh, for people who don't know. And you said that they would commonly use his breakdowns as part of their stories. And I would argue that is the downside of what he does, is you can go somewhere else and get what he's doing without following him on Twitter and you have it in like a concise format where you can re listen or read something. And like you said, on Twitter, you have to actually be on a screen and like follow him and things of that nature. I actually think he would have actually been a interesting sub stack or if Twitter had some, so I know you can super follow people. I still don't understand what that is. I know that you can pay them, I think. So maybe it's, that it's could have been a way that he could have made like money. Twitter circle. It's a paid Twitter server. Okay, okay. Well, that's not then what I necessarily mean then. But like maybe like a Substack or something. I don't know. But like you would need you a Twitter right you could have done. Yeah, yeah. But but I think he there would have there Wario sixty four does it. He makes. I mean, Jesus. He probably makes hundreds of thousands of dollars money. doing what he does. Like From he he has affiliate, affi links. affiliate links. He has ads. He has paid for ads by GameStop by Amazon. Sometimes I've seen like. Those aren't fucking cheap. So he gets paid probably a good bit of money just to do scheduled tweets, just to show off specific deals and things. So he figured that out. I just wish Nibelian did do because I do think he brought an interesting spin. It's just a lot of people are doing what he's doing. And also people with podcasts like I do, like with kind of funny, like with thousands of people that we always mention on the show, they're also doing it too, but they're doing it in a format where they garnered an audience, not on Twitter, but like, through all podcasting, through all of YouTube, through all of et cetera, et cetera, where people are coming and are listening to the news and you can just read what he wrote instead of like doing the hard work that he did and not really getting the benefits of, uh, of what his overall work did. Yeah. Plus I'll, I will add another wrinkle. Oh wait, were you done with your point? I yeah. Yeah. No, 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 please. No, go ahead. <laughs> I'm done. I am done with that. That yes. Okay, I will say not even to push back what you said, but just on Twitter, it is a very rough place to monetize. It is alone. I wouldn't even um, know how to, if I'm being honest. <laughs> like I don't exactly. even know how he would make money. 
because I know I know the exact path to monetization on YouTube. Yep. I know the exact path to monetization on TikTok. Yep. In fact, randomly, I got some email that was like, hey, we saw you're an influencer on TikTok. Do you want to try this free service? I did too. And I was like, yeah, I, I have like 200 people on there. I have 1,500 on Twitter. What the fuck are you talking about? I did the same um, thing. I was like, you, this must have been a mistake. I, I have none, nothing. Yeah. I don't know why the fuck you're emailing me. Exactly. But I think that's just because TikTok is the popular app, quote unquote, right now. So yeah. Hitting everybody up. But like there's past the monetizations on all these other places, Instagram as well, where Twitter, the path to monetization is not through Twitter itself. It's through ad brands with other places. It's through affiliate links that send you elsewhere. You make money on Twitter by sending people somewhere else where YouTube, you make money here. Yeah. TikTok, you make money here. And I think that was the hard part about what he did because Yes, you can link to the articles that you're pulling all your information from. Linking to the article doesn't make you money directly. Uh, breaking it down doesn't make you money directly. There's no real way to do that. And uh, yeah, it just, it sucks. Uh, hopefully Twitter figures that out because there are a lot of people that are great on Twitter that should be making a living for how good they are on Twitter. Yeah. Like either as a service or just being funny. <laughs> like you should be able to make some type of a living off of Twitter. I agree. It is a million dollars but yeah that's how i feel that's how I feel. yeah i agree I, i'm surprised there isn't any way to keep people on here because it does seem like every every idea i have for him to make money involves a podcast or a youtube so like it just mm-hmm. i can't think of a single way that you would make money on twitter so i get why he was just like this isn't working out and i'm getting out i do think it's a shame he probably couldn't but i do think it's a shame that he couldn't show his his or her you you keep saying they i should as well uh, okay. the show their face and any sort of manner and then make that a thing. Maybe Nibelian's news of the week or so, I don't know, but Nibelian's makeup tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they actually look like mob psycho. <laughs> <laughs> it's the insane clown policy. Um, <laughs> all right. That is the news for the week. Let's go to day updates. Only one that I could find atomic heart. Got a re- release date of February 21st, 2023. February seems to be an incredibly, incredibly increasingly bloated month. Be curious to see if anyone bows out at the beginning or end of this year. Uh, because I, I wouldn't be shocked if a few people are like, maybe March. <laughs> like, maybe we'll go in March. Um, January, I'm sure one of them will drop out. But Atomic Heart, I'm, I'm super excited for it. Been, me too. I've been looking forward to that game for five plus years. <laughs> uh, game of the year 2023. Let's go. Yeah. 2023 is going to be a quite a chaotic year to say the least. Um, Emmett, usually I ask you a question, but I do want to relax for a little bit as we got a little too fast in the show. I want to spend a little more time with you. So what is, what does the rest of the year look like for you? I know you recently did that on your home network, VGU. Yeah. Players so, Club podcast. Yeah. So what, what is the, rest of the year look like and if you actually don't want to answer that maybe give us a little taster of that so we can go watch that so it's not fully spoiled on vgu that tv over on youtube but you can also tell us what does the next year of you look like as well what are you looking forward to what are some of the games that you played this year that are making the top 10 really anything take take the question how you will as i do just want to hang out with you a little bit because i've only had you for an hour and i don't like that yeah, we went pretty quickly. I'm I'm impressed, surprised. Uh, but in any case, yeah, I, I'm going to avoid the things that I've talked about in the Players Club podcast to kind of give y'all listeners, enjoyers, uh, a reason to go listen to that. Please. But th- things that I'm getting around to, uh, besides Ghost Song, which just came out, Somerville coming out within like two weeks from now about. Uh, very excited for that one. That one is the game from X Limbo yep. uh, slash Inside Devs. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be that vibe, but maybe just a slightly different art style and aesthetic. I, I love, I, I like Limbo. I love Inside, so I, I can't get enough of those types of games. Um, as a side note, another similar one to that, I picked up Little Nightmares 2 recently. Finally going to play that on Steam Deck. Uh, I had it through Google Stadia, but then once that happened, I was like, well, I got to find a place to play this permanently. So picked it up on deck. Um, Evil West, I am definitely going to be playing. Uh, that is one where I am very, very excited for it, but I have a feeling because it does look like God of War a lot, just in the way that it is uh, over the shoulder melee combat, pull out your gun every couple times. It's, it has similar gameplay flow just by the looks of it to God of War. So I'm nervous about playing it in the same month as God of War, 
but I do want to get around to that. I just don't know if it will be at launch this year or if it'll be, you know, in a couple months when it's like cheaper. Or speaking, something. I have a feeling. Yes. Go speaking ahead. of God of War, uh, that should be evident on why there aren't that much news this week because everyone knew to stay out of God of War's way because <laughs> that would exactly. dominate the news cycle as the reviews are going out and everyone's giving it glowing, glowing reviews. Regardless of it being good or bad, it's going to dominate the news cycle. So that tells you why there isn't that that many news exactly so yeah that totally makes sense so uh yeah evil west i I can't wait for it's just a question of when not if um warhammer 40k dark tide comes to pc at the end of november uh now which one is this one is that the shooter one i know they have a bunch of different ones yeah this is the first person shooter it's uh remember vermintide from a couple years ago yes um, it's Vermintide, but now it's in the future rather than in the past. Oh. So you know, a bunch of guns. Uh, you're on like a spaceship just clearing out just hordes and hordes of enemies. Oh, also as a side note, they're doing like a weird, prom- or not a weird, they're doing a promotion right now for the Warhammer franchise. You can get Vermintide 2 for free to keep on Steam right now. Um, so I claimed that this morning. So if you're curious about the Warhammer franchise. Oh, I'd need I to do that. that. I didn't know that. So they, and they just... Yeah, it's not even a free weekend. It's just you keep it forever if you claim it before the 7th. So, yeah, it's very good. But yeah, Dark Tide I'm excited for. I never played the Vermintide games, but uh, I love Warhammer. What's the one? Space Marine. I always talk about Space Marine, how much I love that one. Uh, And Dark Tide just looks like it's going to be that type of vibe, but first person. And co op as well, but it just seems like it's going to be that type of vibe even if it is more like Left 4 Dead than like a straight up Gears of War style single player campaign. But looking forward nonetheless. Um, going through the rest here, I need to play. I haven't booted this up yet, but I installed it on my Steam Deck. Resident Evil Village DLC. So this um, is the Winter's Expansion, right? Yes, Winter's Expansion. I need, I need to as well play this. Now, I'm not going to replay the game in third person, although that sounds fun. Um, but... Uh, uh, because it's one of those things where I would start and probably never go back to. I'll, I'll be like, oh, this seems cool. And then just drop it and never do it. So, But I do want to see what they're doing with Rose. And also, they said this is the end of this entire storyline. So whatever happens with Rose, I, I seemingly we'll never see her again. Or hmm. maybe we're going to see a huge departure from this set of characters. I don't know. But that is what they, they said, I believe, when they were marketing this. Is This is like the swan song from the what they said something i think ethan winters story or something i think this that this might be the end of ethan winters story as in this is the last time that his existence will be relevant to the story i have a feeling i have a feeling you'll see rose again i have a feeling they don't why would you make her a bait she wouldn't exist in one game Mm -hmm. then she does exist but she's a baby the entire second game and now she's a teenager for the DLC, and now she's gone forever. I, I also thought that was strange. This might have been one of the things where maybe I didn't read it fully or thoroughly enough. Fair enough. Um, because <laughs> I, that does sound strange when I say it out loud, but I could have swore that is what they said. Yeah, I, I have a feeling you'll see her. If if they are doing something where they are abandoning, quote-unquote, the winter story, I imagine it's going to be a reversal in that Resident Evil 7 and 8 is mostly new characters, and then, oh shit, Chris Redfield. I have a feeling, especially since Resident Evil 4 is about to come out with the remake, then we have 5, 6, and then pretty much we're on the current timeline. I have a feeling that by the time we get to Resident Evil 9, they could start reintroducing the remastered cast of the old characters back. I have a feeling Leon could pop up in a Resident Evil 9, uh, Ada Wong, uh, Claire Redfield. I have a feeling you could see a lot of those characters coming back for 9. May, and being may interrupt. Story. Yes. Screen yes. rants Thomas McNuttley. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> Developer Capcom has revealed the upcoming Resident Evil Village expansion. Shadows of Rose will bring an end to the Winter's Family's survival horror saga. The upcoming wow. DLC will take place 19 years after the base game with both players controlling Ethan Winter's grown daughter Rosemary. While some fans have assumed Shadow of Rose will make Rose a main Resident Evil character moving forward, director Kento Kinoshida suggests that her story will soon end. Hmm. So yeah, maybe maybe that is what it is. Maybe this is the end for her, which seems super fucking weird. Very but... weird. Especially yeah. given what happens at the end of Village. I definitely yes, thought it... that was going to be a big deal, whatever was going on. Yeah, it teed so... it up for her, it felt like. Yeah. So. 
Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens there. I, I do think my theory is even more sound right yes. now. But when, I can imagine, what, what you were describing, yeah. I think, is now almost kind of guaranteed to happen. Yeah, I think Resident Evil 9 is when they bring it all back. And I do feel like Rose is going to be in 9 as well. She just won't be the main character. It, she'll be either either she's a villain somehow, which I don't know how they could do that, or she's like in the background while all the other main cast do shit. So, yeah, I feel like they've been teeing that up for a little while with these remakes. I think they're all going to merge at some point, and that point's coming up very fast. So They also yeah. haven't touched why is um, Chris Redfield working with um- Umbrella at all? So Yes. We still have that huge story that just not is being brought up. Yeah, I think we have that to find out. And just all these other things, like the entire main cast, like, yeah, they exist here, don't they? Yeah, and where's Leon, like you said? Where's Ada? Where, like, where's uh, uh, his sister? Uh, um, st- uh, yeah, thank you. Like, yeah, there's so many glaring things. That I'm like, where is any of this? So, mm-hmm. and and like and like I said, we still don't know why he works with Umbrella. So, like, w- what is going <laughs> on with that? That was brought up in seven, not really touched up on in the next game, and t- still don't really know. Yeah, I'm sure we will find out soon enough. Come the time that nine is the game they're talking about. Um, but yeah, looking forward to playing that DLC. I just and I know it's super short too, so I just got to make time for it. Uh, moving on to what is it? It's December. Yeah, December. Got two games for me. Well, I know Callisto Protocol we talked about. What's the other one? Midnight Suns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am trepidatiously excited for it. So I actually am more excited than I was previously because you got me into Slay of the Spire. Um, Oh, yeah. yeah, So you got me into that. I've played the absolute shit out of that game. So if if it scratches the same itches that that game did, I could get into Marvel Midnight Suns, whereas originally I was like, I don't really want to be Wolverine and select an attack card. <laughs> that doesn't sound very fun. But if they nail the, the combat, which I still don't think they will, but if they do, I'm very excited. And it's a great team. So I am very doubtful for a not great reason as it is a very talented team. I just am a little worried. How I'm imagining from everything I've heard about this game, it's the card combat of Slay the Spire with uh the presentation of that combat not being slay the spire instead of it just being two pngs hitting each other it's uh i imagine it's going to be like xcom where it's like fully animated all that stuff and then it's both of those in the combat with like the story and structure of a persona game yeah yeah they did try and although they've not walked back on it they they were like really hitting on like you get to hang out with them and like build a relationship and it is like persona, but I they haven't talked about that in a while. So I'm curious if some marketing with them changed or something. Cause, cause they were really heavy into like, you know, if you build up a, a relationship with Dr. Strange, you can unlock new cards and things and he'll be stronger. And after that, it, they, I haven't heard that since uh, six, seven months ago when they were like really talking yeah. about the game, then they went radio silent for seemingly Never. <laughs> yeah, seemingly ever, and also I, we still don't really know why they did that. Maybe it's because of the combat, but they can't change anything about it. I mean, the game was done, so maybe mm-hmm. there was some crazy bug they found. I, I have no idea. I have a feeling it's just they probably haven't showed that side of the game because when it comes to writing and VO and all of that type of stuff, I'm not saying that's often the thing that gets left for the end of the game, but I imagine it takes a lot of work, and if they did the combat first, then they really got to they got to write more lines. They got to add more content like that. So I can I can understand if it's, you know, not until very up until the release of that game where we hear more from it. If not, we it just drops and then boom, we got it. But we'll see. Uh, I think that game's going to be good. I'm tentatively looking forward to it. I want to see what people think. And then perhaps that's another one where I'll wait for a sale. Um, I am right there with you also on Callisto Protocol. I'm very excited for that one. Very. Uh, it's one of those where... I, I'm looking forward to it, but like there are so many other games where it is just barely in that tier below where I'm like, oh, I can skip this if I'm too overwhelmed with other stuff. Um, okay. I I am still very much so looking forward to it and I will play it, but it's it's kind of like Evil West to me, where Evil West I will also just skip and wait if it is if I'm playing too much at the time. Uh, but Callisto Protocol, like I love I love the Dead Space series, even three I enjoyed. So I'm gonna have fun playing this one no matter what. Uh, I will add 
two things from December that I want to give a shout out to Wavetail, the previous Stadia exclusive. Uh, it's coming to everything on December 12th. Everyone should try Wavetail. It is a very fun 3D platformer with some very good traversal mechanics. Basically, you can like surf on the water and it's very, very fun and very, very intuitive. Everyone should try out Wavetail. I believe that demo is still up on Steam. So if you're curious, go try that. And I am very excited for High on Life. I, have, I completely oh. forgot about one thing. Entrop. Yes. Uh, introp- oh my God, I can never say Entr- this word. Entropy? Entropy Center Entropy. comes out today. Oh. I completely forgot about that. the release date for this game. I am very excited for this title. Um, oh, this is the portal one, but time instead of space. Yes. 100% uh. is what it is. Yes. <laughs> 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 I cannot wait to play this game. Like, I cannot wait. So this is... This is probably going to be a weekend game for me um, playing through this. It looks so cool. Like the actual trailer for it. I showed it to my wife. I was like, yeah, I think you would love this trailer. I showed her. She was like, yes, definitely. So cannot wait to play this. This looks so fun. She will look good. Yeah, I, I have been interested in that one. But like I'm the type of person who I like Portal a lot, but it just wasn't like a game of my life like it was for everyone else. So Entropy Center, it seems very interesting. But it's also one where I think that's definitely going to be one. I'll, I'll just wait for a sale, pick it up on Steam Deck years from now, and I will have a great time. Um, so, yeah, that one's good. Entropy Center, you're right. Uh, looking forward to that one. What was the one I said right before? Oh, uh, let me scroll down. High on Life. Very much so looking forward to High on Life. Um, that is the uh, Justin Roiland, the Squatch Games joint. Uh, the thing is, I don't watch Rick and Morty. I don't really keep up with his projects too much so the only touchstone i have to his type of humor is accounting plus uh the psvr game that i actually platinum that i enjoyed so much and that game is just it's just hilarious the whole time it's fun the whole time and high on life just seems like just a game made for me as far as like it's first person shooter you have like upgrade mechanics there's grappling hooks there's like some advanced movement stuff and it's just constant humor constant quips uh, that is the type of shit I live for, and hopefully it's a slightly smaller title. Hopefully it's not me too. Some yeah, thirty or forty hour epic. I hope it's I, like, ten hours. I get in, I get out. I have a great time. Easy, not easy, but attainable thousand gamer score on Xbox, and I'm in and out. Exactly. Yeah, I'm very much so looking forward to that one. I think that's going to be great. And then um, Sonic yeah, Frontiers, that, right? You know what? You crack a joke. Sonic Frontiers. That's definitely one where it'll come to PlayStation Plus and I'll play it and be like, oh, this is really fun. And I have a feeling the scores are going to be higher than people expect. I think so, too. I I think people are like getting very excited for this. And I actually was going to tweet. I actually tweeted about it. Um, I said uh, I was going to make fun of people being excited for Sonic Frontiers. But then I remember I live in a glass house filled with Final Fantasy X, Kingdom Hearts and Gotham Knights and decided to shut the fuck up. (laughs) So (laughs) that's my stance on Sonic Frontiers. You guys enjoy what you enjoy. I I would love to make fun of you, but my glass house is quite glass. (laughs) So I can't talk. You're talking to a you're talking to a Kane Lynch 2 stand, so I can only talk so much as well. Look, Uh, people who say Kane Lynch 2 is a bad game don't have taste. I'll say it. Honestly, yeah, I mean, that, that's an objective fact. You don't yeah, have taste. If that applies to you, you don't have taste. Um, oh, anywho. let me go play WWE or some fucking. What are you playing, <laughs> Madden? You stupid sons of bitches. <laughs> oh boy, the spice is hot today. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of looking forward to Sonic Frontiers. I think it's gonna be like it, there's a chance it can get like an 80 Metacritic, maybe like yeah. a 75, but. I could easily see it sticking there and it being one of the greatest Sonic games. Hey, man, the furries are going to boost that number up. It's going to be way higher than that. People who are trying to fuck, they're going to have it high. That's what that's all a furry is now. (laughs) Isn't that what it is? It's one of those things where where they're like, it's it's not it's not it's not for sex. Wink. You know, (laughs) like that's that. uh, uh, Look, I've known furries. I've known furries. They they tell me they say it and they go wink. (laughs) <laughs> like no oh, what uh i i would yeah, no. i had a i had a friend that was um they had like a first sona and everything oh wow Good. yeah yeah they had a first sona also i'll tell you this story worked at a gamestop once had a i can't believe i'm about to say this i i was working at gamestop it was when i owned the store i was a manager or whatever i owned the store of course but i was a manager um and i was working one day and a girl walks in with her seemingly boyfriend i mean obviously boyfriend and um she's wearing a tail and uh with a skirt on 
I'll let you use your okay. imagination on where right. on where the tail was. Uh, I can imagine because they're wearing a skirt, and there's only a few things where. So you know, use your well, imagination there. At least there's no seating in a GameStop. At least there's none. Anyways, <laughs> I did uh, uh, jokingly about Sonic Frontiers. Uh, I know my former co-host Alex likes the Sonic games pretty much, so I think he will be playing it. So I'll be semi-playing it through him. He'll tell me his thoughts, and I'll relay it on here. One game that I'm excited for that, I mean, really no one is talking about since it was uh, announced, Pentiment. This is Obsidian yeah, making yeah. a game. They had a small uh, group of devs, I think 10, uh, just kind of shave off. It wasn't working on Outer Worlds 2 or Avowed and made Pentiment, this kind of point-and-click-esque, detective-esque, choose-your-own-adventure type game. You know, like It's multiple things kind of in one. I'm excited. It looks good. It's on Game Pass. I, I'm going to be playing it. Very excited. The only reason I'm not excited for it is because it just looks like an eat your vegetables ass video game. Um, uh, in the same way that I, I made this joke about Dishonored as well. Yeah. Like, Dishonored's a great game. It just looks like you're eating your vegetables when you play that game. There's a lot of games that fall into that category. I have a feeling that something like The Last of Us might be that type of game for someone else. But I'm sure. Yeah. It's just in that tier where I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm sure it's going to get a lot of high reviews. Even something like uh, Disco Elysium definitely is that type of game. So, yeah, sometimes I'm I just need to that. I need to play I'm Disco probably. Elysium. So I just know what this is. I bought it on Steam Deck. I am very excited to try it one day when I make time. <laughs> I had a chip on my soldier with them because I think they have a uh, uh, well, they used to. They got all kicked out now because of a payment dispute, which is very funny because they're communists. But they had a picture of um, uh, Stalin in their office. And I was like. That's not. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not in good taste. <laughs> that's that's one. Joseph wanna, like, Stalin is a very terrible man. So I, I originally wasn't going to buy the game, but I thought that's and eh, that's kind of unfair. I should I should not be so close minded. Although that de definitely turned me off on them. Yeah, I'll say the main reason I'm excited to play Disco Elysium at all is just because it is very much so like it's thinking about a lot of like not necessarily high concepts in like a fantasy realm, but like political concepts yeah. that aren't engaged with at all by at all video games. yeah yeah i agree that's one that's one thing i i kind of like put it on uh i removed it from kind of like my i'm trying to ignore it type thing where it does tackle a subject that is rarely tackled mainly one of course politics although there are many political games there aren't ones that are very introspective in the very american culture that we've developed very few times you really get a game that really kind of digs deep into America specifically. Of course, capitalism being kind of the main driver of the overall theming of the story, as far as I understand. So I do still want to play it. I just haven't had the, one the time and then two. This is so many games. But I will be playing it. I, I, want, to, I want to try and finish it before the end of the year because it does seem very interesting. And I keep hearing people say it's fucking incredible. So I got to play this game. Yeah. I'll also add that it seems like it was less of a pay dispute why they got kicked out. It's more of like the direction of the studio slash IP. I've, I've heard, I've heard like it. five different stories. I heard it was payment. I heard there might have been fraud. I heard it might have been in a directional thing, like you said. I, I've heard so. I have no idea what's real. I, I just of everything. I must it's usually with stories like that, it's probably a bit of everything involved in them getting pretty much kicked out. Like they, I think they owned part of the studio or something, and. They were, I think, bought out or something. Yeah, it's weird because there's like two different versions of it. Where one's a collective, one's a studio. Yep. It's like one's a collective, one's studio. It, it's more complex than the game itself, which is saving. Which is which is hilarious. <laughs> um, one more thing I'll bring up in November: Gungrave. I do want to look into this. It looks kind of cool. It might be one of the ones where I wait. I don't know, but it looks fun. Gungrave is on Game Pass, so that's one bonus. It is. Um, yeah, it's when it launches, it will be. Um, oh, that's right. Remember, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I yeah. remember they posted about it. So I'm actually somewhat interested in Gungrave. I picked up, uh, I've actually been playing the original Gungrave on PS2. Uh, and just looking at gameplay, it plays in a completely different way than you would think. It is a third person shooter where the shoot button is like square. <laughs> and so it's very strange to play. Perhaps they update that when. They bring it when they bring out a new version. You but better let me remap the controls. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, 
hopefully hopefully they don't say hey welcome back to 2003 press square um but yeah it looks interesting i, I want to play through the first one before i get too excited about the new one so yeah we'll see yeah aside from that i think i'm done with november I, we talked a little bit about december so that's pretty much it. And uh, before I let you go, there were some things that broke while we were covering some things. I'm going to quickly go over a few things. Uh, the new Epic Games Store title uh, from November 17th to the 24th is a game called Alba, a wildlife adventure, and Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun. Those two will be free from November 17th to the 24th, which will be replacing Filament, which will be live until November 17th. The Rich 4 has a game director. Uh, this is being from VGC Tom Ivan. In a tweet published on Thursday morning, CG Progress, Sebastian Caliban said he's appointed to direct the new Witcher Saga, which is recently confirmed to be a trilogy of games. If you remember, this is the very ambitious CG Project Red that says that they will not only launch this trilogy, but then within six years will have the trilogy finished. Good luck. Good luck. From six years from the first launch, they will get two more games out that are <laughs> Witcher games. Yeah, okay. Good luck. Don't don't believe that for a second. Um, but he will be directing the news. I uh I will quickly look up his Moby games to see his other credits. Um but uh to, to quickly add, what are you a Witcher fan at all? Do you even care about this news? You know what? I I'm not, but I will say I as I accidentally meet my mic again. <laughs> um I am very interested in the franchise as a observer. Okay. As in, uh, what is it? Joseph Anderson, a video essayist on YouTube, made some really great video essays on both Witcher 1 and 2. Uh, and those videos were long as shit. I think the first Witcher video for Witcher 1 was like five hours. The second one was like eight hours. And I don't he might cross the 12 hour threshold for a video on YouTube for, you know, the Witcher 3 video. He's been working on it for like three years at this point. Something crazy. He sounds like um, um, the history buff that makes like five hours of content every time he releases something uh dan carlin he sounds kind of like oh. that where he just sits yeah. down he makes a thing it's as long as it needs to be he does multiple if he needs to and he goes away that sounds kind of cool though it's very compelling what was his name uh joseph anderson joseph he's, anderson uh, okay i'm gonna look that up later yeah he's made witcher he's done one on zelda one on mario one on the last god of war game so yeah he he does good stuff he's not my well, he's I was about to talk shit on him, oh. but he, he's a great YouTuber. He's a great YouTuber. He's made a lot of good stuff. He's actually an author by trade, so he's already like a book writer. So it makes sense that he can write a really good, you know, game video as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, he's he's really good. So I don't always agree with his opinions, but I respect the perspective. So yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Everyone should have uh, someone that they don't agree with, but they listen to. Mm -hmm. yes indeed yeah sometimes he'll make me like see a game through a different lens and i'm like oh, okay i can see how that'd be bad in that context yeah um but yeah the witcher i'm not super engaged with it i picked up the third game played like an hour of it on ps4 and was like yeah, i'm fine uh and i think i might go back when they do the ps5 version but it's just it's one of those games where you tell me oh it's it's a hundred hour game and each hour is important i might not ever play it just because of that so yeah we'll see sebastian caliban his recent work of course 2020 cyberpunk 277 he was the head of animation and the animation director um i will say one thing about the game the animations were good the animations are the problem if actually when you're in cars and you're looking at people talk it's actually in pretty insanely detailed so it wasn't his fault <laughs> i'll just say that <laughs> uh that wasn't the problem with the game but uh, good on him for being the director for the game. Next up, we have uh, God of War Ragnarok's graphics modes was confirmed. This is a quick one, as I can go very quickly. On PS5, you can have favorite quality or favorite performance. Now they have even more um, detailed modes. So there's like favorite quality plus HFR, which I believe is high frame rate. Uh, 1800 to 2160p and a 40 FPS target. There's favorite quality with high frame rate with vrr which is uh, 1800 um by 2160p and that's an unlocked 40 there's a like there's so i mean there's so much and then you have your ps4 modes which are just favorite performance or favorite quality um i will be going 60 frames obviously but that is very cool how how detailed they get where we just saw both gotham knights and plague tale have nothing in terms of being able to change anything about the game mm -hmm. yeah very refreshing gotta love it when people can code a game properly <laughs> <I just> <laughs> 
say that. I shouldn't say that, but yeah. Um, speaking of of something like that, I did like what um, Vampire Survivors did when they announced they were coming to Xbox. Xbox. Did you see this? Uh, I didn't see their specific announcement. So they're coming with. Yeah, series. so they're coming to Game Pass, but they made a funny video where they had like a Microsoft Word doc open, and it said Vampire Survivor Code, and it said uh, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, etc. It said yes, yes, yes. And on Xbox, they deleted it and said yes. And they're like, it's done. It's coded. <laughs> like, you're acting like that. That's all they have to do to port the game. It's very funny. That's cute. I like that. Uh, so this is a two-parter. Let's, let's, go with, let's go with the one I've always wanted to hear. And somehow we are just now getting his, his uh, quote from it. Hideo Kojima responds to rumors of his involvement with Blue Box Game Studios Abandoned. This is by Adam Bankhurst. Hideo Kojima responded to the rumors and fan theories that he was involved in development of Blue Box Game Studios Abandoned and that it was secretly the next entry in uh, the Silent Hill franchise. Koj uh, Kojima has confirmed he has no involvement and calls the rumors of any connection to Blue Box, quote, a nuisance, end quote. Quote, well, this one I really didn't understand at first. Users just kept sending me pictures of this Hassan. They still send me co uh, collages and deepfake images like 20 a day. It's really quite a nu nu uh, nuisance. This has been going on for almost two years now. And Jeff, you remember when we did that Moby Dick thing? You were in on the whole thing, and that was pretty fun. But people should know that I wouldn't do the same thing twice. End quote. So there are two things I want to quickly bring up with this. One, why didn't someone ask him sooner? Because uh, this happened two years ago. We could have had his statement been done by now. Uh, I thought that was one of the weirdest things. Is no one, he, no, he never said anything about the whole thing the entire time. And two, that doesn't explain why Jeff Keighley was so fucking weird about Hassan Kerman. He was super weird. He did the fake hmm. Twitter thing where he pretended like he didn't get a message and the timing on the tweet was incorrect when he uh. got the direct message. And then two, he was asked during a live stream, and he had a giant goofy like smile when someone asked him about Hassan Karaman. He's like, "Oh, you know, we all know Hassan Karaman," and like walked off the thing. And I was like, "You're hiding something. So what is it?" So doesn't really explain those two other things, but I do believe that he wouldn't just he would just he would lie here. I I think we finally know that the Hassan Karaman thing was just a dude that was over yeah. his head clearly now. Yeah. I always got the I mean, it's definitely the case now where like that whole blue box thing was just more or less a slightly more elaborate sham. Uh, yeah. But I have a feeling that the whole Geoff's response to that might have been in the spirit of like him understanding that they are doing some weird marketing thing. And, you know, it's one of those real recognizes real things where he might not have been thinking he was a implying that kojima was involved by that action but i bet he has an appreciation for like all right they're doing a weird marketing thing i don't want to ruin it for them and maybe he's just smiling out of like a respect for like all right that's pretty cool without knowing that oh there's nothing behind it actually i'll be curious if he <laughs> even knew i knew he of course knows now but i'm curious mm -hmm. if he knew like when it was really hot because i mean he's japanese he lives in japan um it, he's in a different world so like he and he's really Kojima or yeah Kojima? Uh, Kojima. Okay, Kojima, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so like he's in a different world so he could have just not known for a while maybe i don't know uh, i know he started getting sent them so maybe he started knowing it i don't know i'm curious what his side of it looks like um I'm versus bet, i'm betting he knew about it as soon as this was a thing two years uh, ago okay and he is he I is pretty he's online pretty yeah, well, that too, but I bet he just hasn't said anything because, A, he's probably working on a bunch of shit, some of which we'll probably find out in December what it is. Um, but also, I feel like he's just not the type to, like, comment on rumors and speculation because it's inherently – he's such a cool guy. He tries to be such a cool guy. I can't imagine how cool it would be to be like, hey, this thing that people think is me, it's not me, instead of just letting people figure that out on their own. I think it's so much cooler to be like, I'm above it all rather than to say, all right, let me talk about the discourse, you know? <laughs> it took him two years like, to say something. Exactly. I strange. think now it's just a thing of the past rather than yeah. like, all right, let me address the thing everyone's thinking of. Now, that's not the first thing you're asking. You're asking about, hey, what's over to us? I do like yeah. that he said, like, I wouldn't have done the same thing again. I kind of like he was like that. I'm like, come on, guys. Like, it would have been something different. I wouldn't have just done exactly. the same thing. He's above I was it. like, He's above it. okay, okay. I, I like his... 
isn't but uh speaking of what he was working on overdose Hideo Kojima's next game may have leaked again by Logan Plant Hoji Hideo Kojima's rumored horror game overdose has surfaced again with leaked images of a character played by Death Stranding actor Mar Margit Qualley According to a report from leaker Tom Henderson on Insider Gaming, a screenshot of Kojima's overdose have allegedly started to make rounds in multiple private Discord servers. Supposed screenshots are making the rounds online through social media currently. So it looks like we have some things leaking out. I'm trying to see if I can get a picture. It doesn't look like it can, so it's fine. Henderson said the screenshots that are currently circling appear to be from the same video as his original report in June when the game was originally released. According to the original report, Overdose is apparently separate from the likely Death Stranding sequel that will star uh, Norman Leedus, that he accidentally revealed himself, if you remember that. He said he was working on the second game currently a few months ago, and Hideo Kojima leaned into it and like had a, a bunch of pictures of him beating him with a, with, with a bat from Walking Dead, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so it looks like there are screenshots circusing. If you don't care to look at it, I think it'll be easy to avoid this. I don't think it's going to be posted very much. But uh, if you want to go look, I'm sure you can find it. It says it's making the rounds around social media, so you could probably go to Reddit. I wouldn't be shocked if it's at um, r slash... Gaming links and rumors. Yes, thank you. Yeah, gaming links and rumors. It's probably there. So go go enjoy that. I'll tell you what. I typed in overdose on Twitter to try and see if I could just look at the screenshots because I don't care about spoilers or whatever. I don't either. I've never played a Kojima game except for four Metal Gear. So, um, But... I found a different tweet. Uh, Italian police seized 120 grams of cocaine from the set of the Equalizer 3 after a caterer dies of an overdose. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> why are y'all putting Denzel in this situation? Come on now. Whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> oh like, well, quite the headline to just happen. <laughs> why, why? Yeah. I just ty- I typed that out and I saw Denzel's face. I'm like, no way. And then I read and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> no way. Uh, I yeah. think I think I'm looking at a screenshot of it. It just looks very strange out of context. So I I don't really care. It's very interesting face this character is making. I'll say that. Is it the with the mouth open and like a pile of rubble? Yes. Yeah, that's that's the one I saw. I didn't realize. That I can't tell. <laughs> but being honest, it looks like it could be Death Stranding. Sources provide with exactly, screenshots yeah. which, which show Death Stranding's mama in a blue dress. Okay, so no, this isn't it. This is from the game. Okay. I've seen the screenshots, the blurry ones, and honestly, I know it's not, but just this blurriness, it just reminds me of fucking uh, Beyond Two Souls. <laughs> it's just, a, it's just a, a white girl in a dingy area. Yeah. That's very cinematic. Yeah, like, that's... that's yeah. Two Souls. She was homeless for like a third of that game, which is so fucking weird. It was weird, but it, I liked that game. I know, I know, not a lot of people did. I only played it when they actually did the thing that everyone wanted them to do, and they put it in order. So you played yeah. it from when she was a kid up, which is, I, I love that story because everyone unanimously was like, "This would have been way better if it was in story." It's weird that you're jumping around her like life, and it's it's so crazy that they went back and were like, "Hey, we're gonna make that mode. Please buy the game now, <laughs> like in a re-release." <laughs> that's the only way I played it. I never played it when it was bad. <laughs> when it was bad. <laughs> when it was bad. A lot of people would say it's still bad. It's still I, bad. I'm yeah. Curious about it. I'm only curious about it because you know I like Elliot Page a good bit, and also the types of games that Quantic Dream makes. I'm interested in. Even if the stories, I don't think I would ever like. But it's it's a wild to... it's a wild game, but I liked it. Yeah, I'll, I'll investigate at some point. That's on the docket one day. All right. So from there, that's that should be everything. Thank you so much for staying me a little bit longer. Hey, Marcus Jr. I'll let you go. Enjoy your day. I'm gonna go probably play some more video games or something after I'm done editing. I have to edit when this puppy ravaged me earlier with the barks. <laughs> Fair enough. Gotta love it. But yeah, where can the people find you? I, I, we all know Video Games Utopia, but please tell us again. Yeah, Video Games Utopia or just VGU.TV is the website. Uh, Players Club Podcast goes up there every week. Uh, like I said, we're talking about our backlogs for the year, so you can go and check out what games I have to talk about there. Uh, also, on other content, Spoonful is uh, we just put out a video there this week. We talk about that new Taylor Swift album, an album that I did not like much at all, but wow. I got a lot more appreciation of it once this conversation happened. This conversation shed light on some things that I didn't understand, and now I respect that album a lot more, even if I still don't love it sonically. 
as much as others, but it's 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 fine. It went from pretty bad to okay <laughs> for me, for me. So if you want to hear that conversation, I'm not a Taylor Swift person, but uh, the co- my co-host there, uh, Mario Pequadiao, is a massive Swifty. So it's a good convo. Check that out. And also, welcome to The Thing, uh, which is another show that I'm on with T.L. Foster and Jared Green. Uh, we recently put out an episode where we got uh, Ty Gallitz Row to uh, hop on there with us. And he is a delight. All of us were firing on all cylinders on that episode. I really do feel like that's our best episode of Welcome to the Thing yet. So check that out. It's on the uh, Welcome to the Pool House podcast feed, which is their Freshman's of Bel Air podcast. They also do. Whoa. Um, yeah, it's th- I've been on that one too. That one's another good show. Actually, the episode I was on for the Fresh Prince of Bel Air podcast feed, w- or for that Fresh Prince podcast, uh, my house flooded right in the middle of it. <laughs> what? <laughs> it wasn't horrible. It's just that um, what was it? There was something. Our washer was leaking, and so water was like pouring out of my ceiling halfway through the show, and I was like. I, like I heard like dribbles for a little bit, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And I turned around, didn't see anything until like a pool started coming through the door, and I'm like, "Oh no!" Opened it, and like it was just dripping right in front of my door, and I'm like, "Oh fuck!" Wow. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was a wild time. Okay. Well yeah, then, that, that was a whole ordeal. But yeah, welcome to the thing, episode eight. Check that out; it's great. And make sure to check out a spoonful. I do enjoy those quite a bit. I am glad to hear that. Yeah, we we try and switch up the topics every now and then. I know it's been a Taylor Swift month in the last <laughs> couple episodes. Um, but yeah, we gotta figure out what we're gonna talk about next time. We have to schedule that soon. So yeah. I, I do excited. love Always. I do love uh Emmett Watkins Jr. says quote, I tried to get Mario to guess what I what thing I bought. It gave him three hits. The main character's from Africa. It's been adapted into a musical in a three DS game. And the final hit is in this video. I still can't believe he didn't get it, end quote. You're going to have to go to his Twitter to watch, because I'm not ruining this clip. It's very funny. Yeah, I could not believe this man <laughs> didn't get it. You, have, you have to go watch the video. I'm not, I'm not ruining it. It's a very good joke. Yeah, very much so. But yeah, thank you for that one. Yeah, go check all that stuff out. And remember, you can stay tuned to me every Friday. We get you the news of the week in gaming. All those things. You know how to support the show. Like, comment, subscribe. However you support the show is enough for me. I love you. Patreon.com slash easy if you want to support financially. And until next time, go Chief. Whoop-dee-doo.